I don't even know what to make of that. I, I think it makes me a fake fan. I'm just sitting here. Hi guys, I'm Meryl Lee. Welcome to my channel, Book Omens. Today I thought I would talk about must-read fall recommendations. Books that define a fall or autumn kind of feeling can be very subjective, but I define that to mean books that are cozy or slightly mysterious and spooky. They evoke a feeling of warmth, nostalgia, or mystery, creepiness. Things like that. Now I can be a big chicken when reading horror books and so I just wanted to point out that none of the books I'm going to talk about today actually scare me with the exception of one which I actually have to read during the daytime. I have a very vivid imagination and so it just gets the best of me and this book is just one that I, I need to read during the day. Okay so the first book I want to talk about is Carrie by Stephen King. Carrie is a classic when it comes to Stephen King's writings and it was first published in 1974. In fact I believe it was his first published work, although not his first written work. And in this book we have Carrie White, who is a misunderstood, troubled, bullied girl who has telekinetic abilities. And after being horribly bullied, she goes on a terrifying rampage throughout her town. And interest is added as you read the story as there are interviews and articles of first-person encounters throughout. If you've never read Carrie, I would add that there is the bullying that I previously mentioned and also abuse. But this is a Stephen King book, so you kind of expect elements like that to be added. And you also get to see Carrie fight back against her attackers. I first read this book in high school and I have slowly been working on rereading most of Stephen King's earlier works. I read them all when I was a teenager, most of them. I couldn't make it through it, but I really enjoyed Carrie and I have really enjoyed rereading this as an adult. As an adult, one of my favorite scenes was actually one that I wasn't expecting, but it is the scene where the principal is dealing with a difficult parent and he defends Carrie against her attackers. And I don't know, it was just very well done. There is something in the way that Stephen King writes that just captures your attention and keeps you wanting to read more. And this book definitely contained that. The next book that I want to talk about is also by Stephen King. It's The Eyes of the Dragon. This, I think might be one of my favorite books of all time, like a forgotten gem. I first read this book when I was 12 years old and I have a very vivid memory of my sixth grade teacher walking by during our independent reading time and his eyebrows shot up and his eyes got wide and he just looked like he was about ready to have a fit because he was just so shocked that I was reading a Stephen King book and I remember telling him it's not scary it's fantasy but anyway I don't think he knew that Stephen King wrote fantasy. In this story it takes place in the country of Delane and we have Peter and Thomas who are two princes and there is also a mysterious wizard named Flag. Now if you know anything about Stephen King's work, Flag is a character, an evil character, that appears in several of his novels. This book is written in the form of a fairy tale with an omniscient narrator. There is murder, and a fight for the throne, and a fight to gain personal freedom, and this book is just, it's fantastic. It is a must read if you like fantasy. Even if you don't like fantasy, I think you should read this book. It's amazing. The next book I would like to talk about is The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. I have this beautiful special edition. I just love that cover. Now this also is one of my favorite books of all time. I have read it probably up to 10 times. I read it almost every season. It is just creepy and I love it. This is the book that I cannot read at night. I have to read it during the daylight hours because my imagination is so very wild. But yeah, in this story we have Arthur Kipps and he is a young lawyer who is sent to go to a mysterious village and to work in a house that is completely empty. The old woman who used to live there has died and Arthur has been hired to go through her papers and to get her affairs in order. And he is all alone in her fog entrouded house where disturbing things are starting to happen and he is completely unaware of the dark secrets that he is going to unearth. One day he spots a young woman dressed all in black in the distance as he is attending the funeral of his client. 
When his attempts to ask about it in the village go unanswered, he starts to wonder what is really going on. This book is very atmospheric. From the very beginning, you get a sense of the dreadful things that Arthur has experienced as he is thinking about the past and the things that happened to him. You get the sense that the fog is so thick, it actually gives you a feeling of choking. It's creepy and spooky, and I just highly recommend it. One of the reasons that I am so nostalgic about this book is that when I was dating my husband, he took me to the play. The play is a two-person play, and it is fantastic. It is also very scary. When I learned that there was a book after seeing the play, I went out and I got it, and that's when my love for the story really began to grow. If you've seen the movie, it is has a completely different ending, and I don't recommend it. They've added elements of horror to it that don't... Well, they just wanted to up the scare factor. And, I mean, they accomplished that. But I prefer the original, and I also prefer the play over the movie. The next book I want to talk about is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I talked about this book a little bit in a previous video, and I will link it above. And I just... This is a fantastic book. I gave it five stars, like immediately after finishing it, and I really enjoyed reading it. When Rowan Kane accepts a nannying position with a picture-perfect family and a salary too good to be true, she can hardly believe her luck. What she doesn't know is that she is stepping into a nightmare, one which will haunt her long after she actually leaves there. This book involves living in a smart house, and the sense of a lack of privacy is pervasive. You never no, if you're actually alone. She feels like she is always being watched, like there is always somebody there, and it is just very disturbing. And the technology is constantly malfunctioning, from flickering lights to waking them up in the middle of the night. And in the end, she is left completely sleep deprived and accused of a heinous crime. The next book I want to talk about is called The Prestige, and I read this book probably five or six years ago, and I'm still thinking about it. It takes place in the late 1800s, and during a fraudulent seance, two young magicians clash in the dark. And from that moment on, their lives are webs of deceit as they try to outwit and top one another. This constant rivalry will bring them to the peak of their careers, but the consequences will be terrible. And in the course of trying to ruin each other, they will use all the dark tools of their craft. And again, I don't want to say too much more. I don't want to spoil the plot for you. I don't hear this book talked about very much on booktube. It is so good and again it's dark and mysterious. Okay and the very last book I want to talk about is my absolute top favorite of all time and I know I referenced a few others that are some of my top favorites but this is the top tier for me and that is Goodreads. Did I just call my favorite book of all time by the wrong name? Yes. Yes I did. I don't even know what to make of that. I... I think it makes me a fake fan. By Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Now I know this book has a lot of hype recently because of the Amazon Prime series that came out, but it's worth it. The hype is there, it's real, it totally deserves it. This book is amazing. My channel name, Book Omens, is inspired from this book, Good Omens. I first read this book in the early 90s when I was in high school. I loved it then. I love it now. I have read it several times over the years. I know it backwards and forwards. It's amazing. I'll never stop saying that. There is humor that's just packed into this book. Almost everything is a joke. And it's that lovely, dry, witty British humor that I personally love. Now this book actually takes place during the summer, but it's so nostalgic for me that I'm counting it as a cozy fall read. That's usually when I tend to read it. And it counts as a comfort read. So now just a little bit about the book. According to the Nice and Accurate Prophecies by Agnes Nutter, who is a witch, the world is going to end on Saturday, next Saturday. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are hitting the road. Two witch finders are getting ready to fight the good fight, one much more confident about that than the other, and the armies of evil are just getting started. There's only one problem. They need the Antichrist, but they can't find him. Like I said, this book is amazing. If you haven't read it, go read it. If you haven't seen the show, go watch it. All right, that is the end of this video. If you liked it, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. I make book videos every week. I'm so excited to be joining this community and having just the best time. Please comment down below and I'll be sure and say hi back and I'll see you next time. Bye!